Another video from the Angry Photographer here, trying to save you money. Ah, uh, not feeling so well tonight. That's what happens when you eat bad food. Um, wanted to tell you about a secret little toy that you should own. We all know, at least most of you know, that uh, Nikon's uh, professional flash systems are really expensive, but of course they are Japanese made and they're superior quality. And I made you another video a couple weeks ago about uh, buying uh, flashes uh, like the SB800 versus the SB900 versus the SB910 current uh, current uh, current super flash speed light from Nikon's SB910 550 new SB900. Prior to that, yeah, roughly about four four hundred bucks, uh, three fifty. Uh, cheapest that you can use all your features, including uh, TTL and uh, all features, is the SB800, um, which you can grab all day long for around two eighty, three hundred dollars. But I'm going to tell you a secret how you can save some serious money. I've got ten of these, and this flash is old, baby. It is a genuine Nikon speed light. They can be had all day long between sixty bucks and ninety bucks. This is what makes this so special. This is Nikon's first speed light to have a slave feature. Uh, you can set this anywhere or you can have it in your hand. You can take a, a shot. Um, I actually won a couple awards uh, many moons ago by uh, using four of these and uh, setting them up in hidden locations on a beach and doing a model shoot and uh, what I did is I had one I had a hole dug out in the sand and I placed one in a bowl and a hole in the sand and I pointed it up at the model and I had one hidden off in the bushes and I had one with a gel filter and it was an orange gel filter pointing at her face um, the important thing though is obviously I'm not talking about uh, my little award-winning shot back from ages ago reminiscing but the important thing is is that uh, you can use this in non-TTL non uh, manual mode and you can use it as a awesome slave flash. It is an old flash. I was using this back in photography school God, 18 years ago. That was more than 18 years ago. So the flash is that old. It's still a hot ass seller on eBay because these are built like a brick shithouse. Um, ultimately, uh, there is no difference between this and the SB910, the current $550 flash, except for a thousand bullshit features which nobody ever uses because you do not need that much bullshit on your speed lights. Um, you cannot use this in TTL mode, but it works perfectly fine in manual mode and in uh, non-TTL mode, so, I mean, it's... Uh, it's an excellent uh, kick-ass flash. It's made in Japan. It's made by Nikon, and uh, like I said, I've uh, I got a pile of these. You know, they're you can uh, beat them like redheaded stepchildren. They're awesome. Uh, something you need to learn how to do is paint with flash, and uh, something you'll notice a lot of pros have is they'll have a bucket of these. Basic. I mean, they will. They'll have a bucket of these. They'll have a whole bag with like five or six of these. Um, you can do so many awesome things with this. As I've been telling you about the SC29 flash cord for like the uh, SB910 flash. Um, the SB910 flash uh, for getting your flash off your camera. Uh, you can do that with SB910, but you can do that with this as well. What you can do is you can stick your uh, SB7000 or 7100 or F4S or D800 or D610, D600, blah, 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 blah. You can stick all those in commander mode. What happens is, is you, your pop-up flash on your, your Nikon sends out little flashes that activate this. What you can do, instead of actually having a flash cord like the SC29 cable, you can actually have this completely wireless. Shoot at your subject and place this flash anywhere. You can you know, drop it at the feet of your model. I mean, you drop it near your subject, somewhere where it's hidden. And uh, it'll send out uh, pre-flashes, and uh, you do is you flick the switch on the front of the SP26 here, stick it in slave mode. Right now it is in slave mode, I need to turn that off. But uh, anyway, stick it in slave mode, and uh, you can do so much. If you're not screwing with this, you're an idiot. Uh, you talk about composition. You want to talk about the shit that differentiates, you know, Joe Blow's bullshit photography from, like, holy shit, you know, that is beautiful lighting. How do they do that? 
it's all about slaving multiple flashes wirelessly. Um, stick a speed light here, stick a speed light there. You ever wondered why professionals, when they open up their bag, um, they've got like five or six speed lights? I mean, you only need like two speed lights, one speed light and one for redundancy. So why do you see like five, six, sometimes seven speed lights in a pro's bag? Is because they're using them for light painting. They'll stick them here, stick them there, they'll stick them in key locations. Some of the most beautiful photography you've ever seen is one that I've won awards on years ago. Is like I said, you can hide one here, hide one there, use one to light your subject, use another one to like light a tree or something. You know, just think creatively. I mean, you shoot in total fucking darkness, and what you'll do is you'll just illuminate your key subjects. And uh, you can stick a gel filter on one of them and create a special effect on whichever one you want. So you use two or three of these. And the metering is done through the camera. You know, it's ultimately, it's uh, picking up on your spot. But what you do is you'll stick it on spot metering and whatever it is you plan on eliminating. And you don't have to worry about the other, the other, uh, the other objects. You'll, you can learn how to master uh, painting with uh, speed lights in basically one night. I mean... Not total mastery, but I mean, you can get the gist of 80% of it overnight, and uh, you gotta get your damn flash off your damn camera. I mean, step one is the SC29 uh, cable, as I told you before. Step two is like, well, speed lights are expensive. You say I need four or five speed lights, so those fucking speed lights are 550 But Here is secret recommendation. Okay, we got over so, secret lens recommendations. Go on eBay, wherever you can. Try to snag one of these for 60 Typically, going price is like 75 or 80 bucks. But they're bit like a brick shit house. They're made by Nikon. They're genuine Nikon. Yes, they're older, but they are perfect. What you do is you stick your uh, pop-up flash on your Nikon body in uh, commander mode. Read about it in your manual if you haven't done it already. And then what you do is you can get your flash completely off camera. Do under lighting like for spooky effects, side lighting, all sorts of freaky lighting. You want to take your photography to the next level. Here's trick number one I'm going to tell you. Get your fucking flash off your fucking camera. Okay? You're like, hey, I don't know how they do with these photos. You know, it, it's, that's, that's, there's a lot of steps, so there's step one. Get your flash off your camera, baby, and learn how to paint with light. What differentiates out, differentiates out, uh, excuse me, but differentiates out, you know, the, uh, the idiot with the expensive camera and the professional is, uh, composition. You know, you're gonna have to teach yourself composition. You're gonna have to create your own eye. Nobody could really teach you that. They could tell you things to look like, like thirds and whatnot. But the other thing is light manipulation and uh, painting with light in low light. I mean, I tell you, when you take some awesome pictures, I mean, I could teach a retard how to do how to take the most gorgeous fucking pictures. Take a tripod into a dark church. Take three of these speed lights. Stick one at like the altar with like a gel on it, like an orange gel, stick another one in the pews, and then stick like a person in another pew. I'm just thinking on the fly here. I mean, I can think of a million scenarios like this. Stick another person in the in the pews, you know, stick this one beside him. You sit back with your camera on your tripod or any handheld. Your camera sends out monitor pre-flashes, and you get three illuminated beautiful spots. You, What you've done is you've uh, taken composition, you've combined it with your lighting effects, or and and or also uh, gel filters uh, on the end of your speed light. You can cut your own. You can go to Office Depot and just buy like uh, report covers. You know, just the clear plastic covers that are green or orange or whatever. Just as long as it's clear plastic. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't have to be a gel. Important thing is it's getting the light through there at the uh, correct uh, color and tone that you want. Um, but it's all about getting your flash off your camera. And this is the best option. This is secret recommendation number three. It's not a lens recommendation. Um, but I'm telling you, 70% of photography is flash photography. Everything's then go out there and take shots. Well, it's too dark. I can't take pictures. Well, a lot of those gorgeous pictures that win awards and that look so beautiful. It's all about flash, learning how to use your flash. And uh, for 70 75 bucks, you can't go wrong. These are built like a tank. Not to say they're indestructible, but it's the first Nikon speed light that has a slave feature. The first professional speed light that has a slave feature. Oh, additionally, I can also use this with... Uh, now, you're not going to use that like a quantum turbo pack. This is a, a slot for uh, adding external power. I can turn this cheapy $75 flash into a machine gun. 
And what I mean by that is I use external uh, quantum pack, which is a $700 battery pack to power this sucker. And instead of waiting for this thing to recycle, as a typical flash does, you know, you shoot, you gotta recycle, you gotta wait. You hook up a quantum pack, plug it in right there, and boom, 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 just like that. Um, perfect for weddings, perfect for newsies. Um, so you gotta get one of these SP26, and by one of them, I mean more than one of them, at least a couple of them. You know, for the cost of two of these, for like 150 bucks, I mean, you, you, you can't even fucking touch half, half, of what an SB800 costs, and that's the old model. Not that there's anything wrong with it at all, I mean, this is the really, really old model, but, uh... You know, as long as it's in decent shape, I mean, it's great. And if you can find one where the hot shoe's broken off, it won't work on your camera. But who gives a shit? You know, you can get it cheap. Who gives a shit? You're using it as an external uh, external speed light. It's slaving off your uh, commander uh, function off of your uh, camera. So if you can find one that's broken, which I've done before with a broken hot shoe mount... It's like, well, it's broken. It's you know, it still works, but it's broken. Doesn't matter. You're using it wirelessly. As long as it functions, it functions. You don't need this for jack shit unless you plan on putting it on your camera. So that's tip number two on buying one of these cheap if you can find one that's got a broken hot shoe. So that's my secret tip recommendation: SB26 Nikon Speed Light. Made in Japan. Awesome. Useful. It's all about getting your fucking flash off your fucking camera. Period. That's where the beautiful shots come from, baby. That's where they come from. Uh, send me recommendations, whatever, and I'll uh, make some more videos as uh, as I can. I feel a little sick tonight, so I'm only going to make a few videos, and uh, I suppose that is that for this evening.